Hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation on conveyor drive design. Thank you for inviting me to the Polish American Engineers Association September 2023 meeting. So our lecture is on the topic of conveyor drive design. And in our terminology, this is referring to bulk materials handling conveyor drive design. On the left, you can see a hop two hopper feeders beneath a, a big bin at a quarry in Georgia moving limestone. The one on the right is a single hopper, a single paint laid hopper, which could be a loading material onto a conveyor belt, which could be pea gravel or it could be corn, it could be anything. Here we have an example of a typical hopper, a single paint laid hopper. It has a certain opening width and a certain opening length. The conveyor here is beneath the bin. This is empty, this is full. What is the force required to overcome this drag? This is like a, a snow plow, plowing snow on the street. Uh, if you could consider the conveyor belt moving this way, that makes this edge of the hopper almost like a snow plow, pushing snow that way. How do we calculate it? We could care less how much material is in the hopper. The only thing we really care about is the size and shape of the active volume of material because that is all that will be felt by the conveyor belt. This is called hopper arching theory. Uh, it's well documented that a parabola can approximate the amount of active material which, which is pushing down on the conveyor belt. So what is the force required to overcome this drag at this edge as the belt pulls material from beneath this particular active zone of material? We uh, have simplified this methodology by saying you can approximate this parabolic shape conservatively by uh, approximating it using the shape of a prism. And a prism is defined by so much length, our hopper opening length, so much width defined by the geometry of the hopper, and the height. And the height is set three times the width or three times the length, whichever is smaller. That will conservatively approximate a prism, which will equate, more than equate to what a parabolic shape would weigh. Once we know the volume in cubic feet, we simply uh, calculate the weight by using the bulk density, so many pounds per cubic foot, so times so many cubic feet gives you so many pounds. To convert that weight into a horizontal force, which we call drag load, we simply mul multiply by 0.5. So 0.5 times the active weight would be the amount of extra drag required to overcome that load. Now, you're all engineers, so I'm showing an excellent idea in reducing required drag, which is hopper pressure relief. If we have the same dimensions in the hopper length, opening length and width as before, but we decide to weld in angle irons, this cross section view AA is a cut here looking at the bottom of the hopper after angle irons have been welded in. If so if we change the opening from one opening to four openings, we do something amazing because once again, the equation is the same as before, height is set to equal three times the width or length, whichever is smaller. And as you'll see in a minute, the amount of volume decreases uh, quite a bit by putting in hopper pressure relief. And allow me to allow me to run this uh, animation for you. First, we see uh, a parabolic shape that would uh, coincide with one hopper opening. And in this example, it's uh, almost 154 cubic feet. Now, if we were to install pressure relief, we would no longer have an active volume of 154 cubic feet, but rather a total of uh, just under 77 cubic feet. You'll notice that the amount of volume is one half of that amount of volume. If your product is small enough to flow freely through those four openings, we strongly recommend that designers use that option. Now, um, this will be my second and final demonstration of the program. I've preloaded hopper parameters. We don't have the same 
parameters as before. This is a short conveyor, very typical of a hopper feeder, 10 feet long. A typical tonnage rate would be 250 tons per hour, quite low, and a belt speed, which is also relatively low, 100 feet per minute. I've loaded in all the other parameters. And what I've done is I've made the hopper opening zero. And you'll notice that if we have no hopper to move this amount of product at that speed on, this, on a conveyor that's that long, we only require a little over one horsepower. But let's say we actually have a hopper, which has an opening width of 36 inches and a length of 66 inches with one opening. Notice that our 1.1 horsepower becomes 23 horsepower because the amount of drag exerted by that active load is almost 7,000 pounds. And so a total of 7,027 pounds times 100 feet per minute gives you an enormous amount of power required to withdraw the product. But now watch this. Once again, we're at 23 horsepower with one opening. And if we convert it into four openings, it's no longer a 23 horsepower, but 12 horsepower will do the job. And if the material is small enough to, to fit easily through those holes, it's well worth doing because the amount of power that would be saved by so doing. Let's see what that means. Uh, with one opening, we had an active volume of 154 cubic feet. The drag load calculated out to the number you can see here. And at the 100 feet per minute belt speed, uh, once we allow for some drivetrain losses and so forth, we know that the amount of power required for one opening is 23.2 horsepower. And with four openings, we cut that active zone in half. And so now the amount of power is just about in half. What does that mean? Well, that means if you're running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 50 weeks a year, and the utility is charging 10 cents per kilowatt hour, the amount of savings by sticking in $50 worth of angle iron is uh, almost $7,000 a year. Well worth doing.